Hi, uh, I'm Vikram, and um, I'm speaking about the Google Web Toolkit and uh, some of the APIs that Google has made available to developers, specifically the Ajax API and the Data API. So um, let's get started. Okay, uh, my first slide, I'm going to show you what social auth looks like. The reason I'm doing this is because um, it's entirely developed in GWT. Um, Google Web Toolkit, I'm also you know, going to be referring to it as GWT or GWT, so you know, just in case those are wondering what GWT is. This entire interface is developed using GWT, so um, I think you know, it's only fair that I show you what's possible with GWT before I go on blabbering you know, about it. So it's, you know, it's very flexible. Uh, the entire interface is, um, you know, almost every part of it is in, uh, developed using GWT. And um, as you can see, it's not entirely a simple interface. It's got a lot of elements to it. It's got a calendar embedded in it. It's got images. It's got multiple panels and, you know, all kinds of things. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, what is GWT? Well, um, GWT is something, uh, it's, it's relatively new. I don't think there's anything uh, quite like GWT out there, at least not something that I have come across. It's, uh, it's a way to write web interfaces in Java. So, you know, you actually develop the whole interface, the design, everything in Java, and uh, then Google has compilers that will convert it into JavaScript for you. And um, along the way, the compilers have a lot of intelligence and you know, they're able to do a lot of things that uh, you would have to manually spend time doing in normally. Also, when I, um, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with GUI development in uh, Java using things like Swing or uh, AWT, I think that's what it was called. This is just application um, GUI, it's not web. So GWT is kind of similar. You have panels and of multiple types. You have components like text boxes and combo boxes and radio buttons and buttons and labels that you can put together on these panels and then put panels in panels. And you know, it's a lot simpler than you know when I'm just talking about it when you actually look at it. Uh, seamless and flexible. Again, I say that because it works with the Google uh, Eclipse plugin that Naveen already mentioned. So um, you can just start using Eclipse, develop your things, and it has a plugin that will just compile and show you the output right there. So the the cycle is really quick. You can make a code change and just refresh a page and see how your site looks now. Another big thing uh, is obviously this. A lot of web developers, you know, do really cool things, and then, you know, people are like, oh yeah, but I, uh, you know, at work we use IE6. Uh, does your app work in IE6? And then, you know, it doesn't. And you have to uh, spend weeks trying to get it to work in IE6. And then after you're done with that, you realize it doesn't work in WebKit, or it doesn't work on Firefox. And it's, it's a mess. It's a waste of time. Google, over its, I don't know, 10 plus years of developing GUI and web applications, has figured out how to make this stuff work. So what they do in GWT is that they take your Java code and they compile it into one module for Firefox, one for WebKit, one for IE6, one for IE8, one for IE7. So it's really good in that fashion. Then if statements is none of that, it actually loads the JavaScript for the respective browsers. So that's how it works. And it's all automated. You don't have to do anything. So bottom line is you get completely compatible uh, websites. Uh, compile, optimize, standalone, again, uh, unlike other JavaScript frameworks like uh, Dojo or um, many of the others that you're familiar with, they have to load the framework first and then, and then your application will execute. There's none of that in GWT. In GWT, it's uh, the, whole, the whole JavaScript, which is really tiny, contains everything that's required to launch your web site. Okay, gains from uh, Google, uh, years of domain expertise. There are a lot of cool things I'll get into a bit later, but uh, Google knows how to write these things, like how do you make uh, JavaScript load faster? They use a combination of iframes to do that. You know, how, how, do you, um, you know, how do you make 
Um, how do you make web layouts faster? I'm sure a lot of you know about web layouts. You probably use divs and spans and then use a lot of CSS. Surprisingly, that's not the fastest way to do it, even though that's not a bad way. But tables, something that a lot of you just forgot about when you came into this world of divs and CSS, tables are still the fastest rendered on browsers. So GWT pretty much lays out everything using tables internally. And it's much faster than anything else. It's pretty flexible, too. Localization, everyone knows what that is. OK, I'm sorry. Um, oops. OK, this is an example of, a, of a, an each. So when you're writing GWT and use a plugin, it takes care of most of this for you. But every GWT application needs one HTML file, the starting point, to which job, uh, the JavaScript is then inserted into. So this is how it looks. It's relatively simple. It's got this JS file that you have to mention. This is HW is your project name. So this is basically the compiled project that gets loaded. And uh, there's this iframe history thing. Again, this is only required for um, browser history management, state management. I'll come to that later. Again, you can do fine without it if you don't want that. This is how uh, a hello world in GWT will look like. Again, mo the best way to approach GWT is not to think of it as, oh, you know, this is complex programming. You can actually approach it, you know, just like any web developer would approach, uh, you know, writing a web page using you know, HTML. So it kind of flows, but it's in Java, obviously, but the flow is quite similar. So it's relatively simple. It, uh, this is a, it just, it's a hello world implements entry point. The plugin creates all of this for you. Uh, there is a vertical panel. There has to be a main panel. So vertical panel is nothing but just a panel that lays out elements in a vertical fashion. So the first thing you add to it gets laid out on top, the next one below it, the third one below that one. It just goes on in that fashion. And there's a label. I mean, I'm sure a lot of you here are developers, and you know that I don't need to explain that. That's really simple. You create, instantiate a vertical panel, put a label into it, and then there's this final line that adds this main panel into, um, into the whole, uh, um, into, into the HTML. So. Then, um, okay, so now uh, Ajax is like a big part of um, web development today. So GWT has a lot of support for Ajax. They have, uh, it has like multiple ways you can actually uh, handle this paradigm that they call Ajax, asynchronous um, Java, JavaScript stuff. Uh, GWT RPC is probably the most sophisticated and, well, I would say the more complex of the methods. You need uh, you need to develop stuff and stuff. It's an RPC standard, but it's very cool because um, you can actually move objects between your servlets and your interface almost seamlessly. Like if you have a data structure, like a hash table or something you've created in your servlet, and it'll just show up in your web interface that you can you know work on and. Um, you can move them back and forth. Exceptions that are thrown in your servlet would actually be, could be handled as exceptions in your web interface. So uh, if you do want to keep all your development in Java, it's another advantage of GWT that I kind of missed getting to before. But um, a lot of people develop backends in Java too. So developing your backend and developing your front end is you know, almost seamless. It's like working on one application. You could have an exception that you throw in the servlet that's technically the backend, and you could have a try catch statement on in the GUI to kind of catch it and handle it. So it's great that way. Um, another thing that's uh, you know always been a problem in Ajax is uh, using the browser's uh, forward and backward buttons. So if you actually have it, something that happens in Ajax and you go back, it normally just skips to the previous site or something. Well, in GWT they handle it automatically. So I'm sure you've noticed this in Gmail. If you open up a mail and hit the back button, it without really reloading your page, it goes back to your inbox, or you know, vice versa. So um, it's actually done using GWT's history management stuff. So um, okay. So um, you know, getting back to GWT, I, there's um, there when I.